Let's carve some perfect pumpkins with a design from Creative Fabrica and the Silhouette Cameo 5. Hi, I'm Brenda here today with Creative Fabrica and if you haven't done so yet, you're going to want to hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. There are new videos coming out all the time and you're not going to want to miss them. Today's project is relatively easy and a lot of fun. Let's take a look at what we're going to need today. Today's supply list is quite simple. I have some vinyl here. You can use permanent or removable vinyl and it does not matter what color you use. It's just going to be a stencil. I have some transfer tape. I have my X-Acto knife. I do have two pumpkins to work with today. I got these from Joanne Fabric. They are carvable foam pumpkins, but you can use this technique on just regular pumpkins as well. And of course, I will be cutting the vinyl out with the Cameo 5 today. You're also going to want a measuring tape so we can figure out the size of our stencil. I'm going to measure across the top here. That looks like four inches. Now for the face, we're looking at a height of right around four inches on this one. Now for the second one, it looks like I can still go with four inches on the top and the height can be right around seven inches on this, but I don't want to go any larger than that. If you go to Creative Fabrica and type in jack-o-lantern, you get a ton of options here. There are a lot of faces. I decided to go with this one here because I can mix and match all of the features and come up with the exact design that I want. Super cute. You're going to want to click on download. That'll go up into your downloads here. You can click on this. You're going to want to extract all and then click on extract. Now your files have been unzipped and they are in your downloads. We are ready to head to Silhouette Studio. Now in Studio, we can go to file, down to merge. I'll be working with the SVG file today. Double click on that and it brings all of the pieces in at once. I'm going to select them and move them off of my mat and we can get started. I think the best thing about this is just playing around with the designs and coming up with exactly what you want for your pumpkin. Now I'm going to do the tall one first and I think this will be good for the mouth. This one's going to be kind of spooky. I am choosing features that are kind of elongated because the pumpkin is tall and I want to add some eyebrows to this. These are meant to be eyes, but I think they will make pretty cool eyebrows too. So let's right click and ungroup these. And now we can move them around individually. I want to tip them in just a little bit. I think that's just about perfect. Now I'm going to select all of these pieces, right click and group them together. And we can work on the smaller pumpkin now. It was more of a round shape. I don't know why, but I think the round shaped pumpkins should always be cute and the tall ones should be somewhat scary. I do like this mouth. I'm gonna grab these little circles here for the nose and I'm going to put this piece on top. I think that's super cute for a nose and we'll give him some big eyes. Like we're going to skip the eyebrows on this one. I think I want this mouth a little bit bigger. Now we can select all of this, right click and group that together. Now this guy can be up to seven inches tall. So with the aspect ratio button locked, we can enter seven for the height. Once he is that size, it looks like his features need to be a little bit closer together. Let's just scooch his nose up and scooch his mouth up a little bit. I think that will be okay. Let's group that together again. And this guy, we can go with four inches tall. And now we can grab all of this, right click and delete. Now for the top of the pumpkins, I'm going to go ahead and grab my ellipse shape, hold down my shift key and draw out a circle. I want this circle to be four inches and this is going to be the template to cut out the top. 
I do need to put a hole in the center so that the stem will fit through it. We can do that with the offset panel. Let's click on that. And we want to use the internal offset. I'm going with a distance of 0.5. Click on apply. Now we can select both of those, right click and make a compound path. Through all of my pumpkin carving experience, I have learned that we can take a triangle. Let's convert a path on this, shrink it down, and just add it to the side. It doesn't need to be large, but this little notch is going to help us line up the top perfectly every time. We don't have to spin it around 10, 20 times just to get it on there right. Let's select both of those, right click and weld. And now we are going to duplicate because we need one for each pumpkin. Now we can head to the send panel here. I have my material set to matte vinyl. I'm using the auto blade to cut this out. I do like to bump my blade up to a two when I'm cutting vinyl and leave all of the other settings the same. If you are not familiar with your machine or you're cutting a new material, you always want to do a test cut first. Now we can get the material loaded on our mat and we'll be able to send this through. These designs were pretty simple, so they cut relatively quickly. Remember to check your cut before unloading the mat. If it did not cut properly, you can adjust your settings in the software and run it through a second time. These are the pieces that are going to go around the top. I'm not going to use transfer tape with these. I'm just going to set them in place. You will want to use transfer tape when you're picking up the faces. Get that laid down, use your scraper, and remove it from the backing. Once you have it in place, you want to smooth down the center and then work your way out to the edges. Because we're working with a rounded surface, you may need to cut slits in your transfer tape to get everything to lay down properly. And I'm just going to use my finger to get all of these pieces stuck to the pumpkin instead of a scraper. Once they are all stuck down, we can remove the transfer tape. And he's already looking super cute. Now we're gonna get started with our X-Acto knife. If you have never worked with the foam pumpkins before, you're probably going to need a minute or two to get familiar with exactly what you're doing. It felt a little bit strange cutting into the foam as compared to a regular pumpkin. And it took me a minute or two to really get the feel of it. Once I got going, it did get a little bit easier and I really like the fact that after you're done cutting a piece out, you can go back in and kind of even things out, make it look nice and smooth. I did notice that the smaller pieces are very hard to get cut out. And I'd like to say that these foam pumpkins are not meant for small children to cut out. If you want to do these pumpkins with small children, you're going to want to create an actual stencil and they can paint these with acrylic paint. The main advantage to these foam pumpkins is that they will last a very long time. The disadvantages, however, are that they are more difficult to carve than a regular pumpkin and they have an odor. It reminds me of the E6000 glue, so if you are sensitive to that smell, you are going to want to avoid these altogether. I personally will always prefer a regular pumpkin, seeds and all. We're almost to the end now. We just have to cut out the circle on the top so that we can put our light in there. If you are using a foam pumpkin like this, you want to be sure to use the battery operated tea lights not a tea light candle. 